This is Horama, where your vision is activated. I want to thank you very much for uh, uh, coming to our ministry and uh, partnering with us. Tonight, I have a very, very wonderful partner um, who is also a very good friend, um, um, a great banker. Um, I want to thank you. Uh, Rosie, thank you very much for being with with us in these broadcasts. I'm very, very proud of you that on this day of uh, my triumph, <laughs> can I say my pain? <laughs> my triumph, you are with me tonight. Thank you very much. Um, I want to share with you what is very dear to my heart. I hope you guys can see how we've been able to put together our studio to be for an intimate experience with the bishop, with me, an intimate experience with the Holy Spirit, an intimate experience with God the Father, an intimate relationship with the ministering spirits of God, the angels, the living angels, um, I ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you very intimately so that you will understand and be able to execute the, 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 the powers of the word of sacred scriptures. I want I want the things about Jesus and Jesus himself to be made available for you. I, I want him, what he has done for you, to happen to you for good. So let's go from here. Let me ask uh, our partner to read to us uh, from Romans chapter 10. Um, um, begin to read. When you read uh, a verse, you stop. Then you read the next verse, you stop. Then the next verse, you stop. Let's start. Okay. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what says it? The word is nigh thee. Okay, stop there. Stop the mark where you stop because you start from there. The word is with you. What sayest thou? See, so I'm speaking in Elizabethan English, uh, the English of the queens. What sayest thou? What do you say? The word is with you. The two ways of looking at this. The word is Jesus. Jesus is with you right now. He's right here with you. What he has accomplished at Golgotha through his death, what he did to take back what belongs to us and give to us. Jesus did not go to the land of the dead to fight for himself. He went to fight for us and for the sons who were waiting for the son of David to come and save them, the son of Adam. All that he did in his resurrection was for us. This is how we understand the power of the love of God. The love that carries tremendous power. Everything he did was for us. And his word that he spoke, his word is himself. The word that is written about him by the, by the, uh, the co-shepherds of the gospel. 
not just that they were writers like Paul, they are the teacher apostle. But they shared in the suffering of Christ and so they amplified what the gospel writers wrote. What the Holy Spirit inspired in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit not just inspired, but also expanded that story, make it clearer and deeper for us to understand true revelation in Paul. See, every word that Jesus spoke represent him. It's just like you're watching my video on YouTube and other platforms. It's really me. It is I, even though it is a video, it's anointed. The word of Jesus is Jesus, is actually Jesus, his presence in a physical form, in a tangible form, being made available to us. And until you begin to see the written gospel, the written epistles, the written Psalms, the laws and the prophets about Jesus until you begin to see them as not just a written things but a living thing. Turn the word of God about Jesus into a living thing. Make it to be real now. That's what the Holy Spirit is urging us. That's the only way that when you begin to value the word that way, out of it comes the real Son of Man walked into it because you know that he means what he says. You know that his word is him. What he says carries tremendous power. And so when you read it back to him, and when you use it for good things, things begin to happen. The gospel is with us. The word is near you. You have the gospel. That's what Paul is saying. You have the word. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You have all the work of the epistles. You have all the great things spoken about Jesus and his coming. And he came in the law and the prophets and the Psalms. The word is right there with you. You have the Bible in your heart. Turn the Bible from being just a book. Turn it into a living power. Let the Bible become a power thing. Use it. And in this, in this, um, in this broadcast, I will, I will, I will keep showing you how you can turn how the word can work for you so that you do not need to do a lot to get things from God, to get things from humans, to reap a harvest where you sowed great seeds for prosperity, riches, and great wealth. The word is right there. And let's see what the Paul is going to give us a summary of that word. Go ahead, lovely one, go ahead. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Okay, stop there. Okay. Stop there. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. He summarized where the word of God is going to be used to sow seed and to harvest great product, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Heart, I always say, let's look at it this way. Use your spirit. Use your spirit to get what you want. And if you do not know how to use your spirit, use your spirit, supernatural imagination. If you cannot see it with your spirit, imagine it with your mind while you pray. God uses, like myself, God, God tap into my imagination. He uses that a lot. 
most of the time I am in, so that place with him, with my spirit man. And there are times that my supernatural cognition, my supernatural intellect, imagination is at work. If you cannot see what you want, if you cannot see it with your, if you cannot see it with your spirit, because nothing is coming in there, use your imagination. The Holy Spirit will come in and use it. It is true that God relates to us spirit to spirit, but when it comes to getting things, to getting things accomplished, our imagination is also very important here. That's why you go to visit the car lot, which, so that you can see them with your physical eyes. And with your eyes, it keys into your mind. With your mind, it seeps into your spirit and sits there and begins to work. So we get things with our mouth and with our spirit, with our spirit man. Please repeat that, repeat that last place you read. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Even the word, the word that will accomplish great things for you, that will remove you from how you were born and transform you from how you were born into how you have been born again. You have been born again to prosper, period, to be rich, prosper, to be rich and to be wealthy, that's it. To be healthy. Some of us will make money with their spirit, some will make money with their mind, some will make money with their practical, with their hands. The word that is going to do this is in your mouth and in your spirit. We overcome with the word of our testimonies. Where is our testimonies? What we know, what we've seen, what we are convinced about, what we believe about who Jesus is, what he has done for us, the love of God the Father for us, the plans of God that are deposited in our spirit, and they are now, they've moved up into our mind, and we can tap into it. Word of our testimony, the word of God, is in our spirit, is in our mouth. The word is with you. And not just that, Jesus dwells in you. Begin to know that your word carries tremendous power. Your word is not just empty anymore. Stop thinking that you are common. Stop thinking that your word is just a mere word. Begin to attach great importance to the word of God that you've memorized, to the dreams God has given to you, not just any dreams, to, to, to the to the destiny that you are convinced about your life. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, even in thy spirit. Let's see what that word says. Continue, that please. Is, that is the word of faith which we preach. Look at that. That is the word of faith that we preach. That is the word of faith that we preach. Which means that word that is in your mouth, that is in your spirit, comes, is a supernatural reality, it's a supernatural word. It's not man's makeup. The word of faith. Faith in whom? In Jesus and what he has done for us, what he has secured for us. Jesus will tell people, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they say yes. Even the word of faith which we preach. 
Now, what is the gospel? The summary of the gospel is that Jesus is God. The summary of the gospel is that Jesus is Lord. So he, he is God, he is Redeemer, he is King. That's the summary of the gospel. The summary of the gospel is that he rose from the dead. If not, his crucifixion would be nothing. He would just have died an ordinary criminal. We are dealing with a God here. who to save us have to become like one of us. Even the word of faith which we preach. Jesus said to Jairus, do not doubt, only believe. Believe what? Believe me. That's, he was telling Jairus, believe me. I'm with you. You have the strongest you have, the, you have God right here with you. Why are you doubting? I make human beings. I can raise them from the dead. Do not fear anymore. Why do you think that your problem is bigger than I? Why do you think that your problem will never be solved? Why are you so overwhelmed by the complaints and by the arrogancy and rascality of other human beings. Believe me, that's what Jesus is telling you. That's the word of faith. Do not doubt him. Now let's see how we get these things. It is supernatural. A human word will deceive you. Human beings will go back on their words, which is true, because they are humans. But Jesus will not go back on what he has done for us. Jesus is the greatest gift of God to the world, while the Holy Ghost is the greatest gift of God the Father and of Jesus to the church. The word of faith. There is a place where he will ask you to do something. There is a place where he asks you to do nothing. When it comes to salvation, all you need is use your spirit, use your mouth, you're secured. And don't walk away from him. But when it comes to getting wealth, getting money, securing houses, Becoming wealthy on earth so that you can worship God with dignity and honor. So that you can better represent him either openly or, or silently with dignity and honor. You need these things. You need money. You need material resources. You need happiness. You need help. Continue, please, my dear. Jesus. If you will confess, if you will confess, how do you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth? Even if you are dumb, you cannot speak, but you can hear, you use your mind to think, use your thinking. Because we speak through different ways. We speak with our emotion, we speak with our bodies, we speak with our spirits. But here, for those of us who are not dumb, who are not affected by that, if you will confess with your mouth, if you will proclaim, if you will declare with clarity, knowledge, and belief, and not just something that you are just doing because that's what we were taught to do, but you are convinced about it. If you will confess with your mouth, it is the mouth you use to get things. Let's get into that territory. It's about time. You use your mouth to get things. Devils use their mouth to curse people. They use their mouth to read out 
edicts that has been written against people. You should also use your mouth to read out edict written against them. To remind him of hellfire that is coming for the sons of rebellion. Which is them. They don't want to talk about those things. It's your place to remind them. You use your mouth to blaze yourself. If you will come face with your mouth and say, Jesus, I am fully convinced that you are God. I'm fully convinced that you are my God. You are my Savior, my Redeemer. You are my King. Okay. I, I don't have anybody who is going to make sense of my being a, a created being, a spirit being. It's you who make me make sense. I only make sense because of you. So I, I proclaim, when he says confess, it means proclaim. I proclaim that you are all I got. Other gods have not helped me. Other human beings haven't helped me. I need you. And I love you. I hold tight to you. You are the God that I'm going to bow and worship for all of eternity. I'm not going to go back. I don't care about what will be thrown at me to test my conviction about you. But by the way, I want to start to enjoy heaven on the earth. You are my God. Save me. Love me. Be my God. I bow as your subject. Be my king. I willingly do this with all my heart. And deliver me from all the oppression of wickedness. So that I can save you. I can worship you. I can be yours without stress. Lead me so that I will not make wrong choices. Write my name in the book of life and remove my name from the book of death due to my being born a son of Adam, subject to eternal death. Destroy the powers of darkness that they existed and has been ruling my family. Start a new history with me. That's what you are confessing. Even though I was born poor, through you, now give me the intelligence, the ability, the stamina, the, the, the energy, the new power. That's where you are going to ask to be anointed, to be, to be, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the manifestations so that your destiny will be clear. So that you can focus on one thing and do it very well. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Prince over the Kings of the earth. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Continue. And shall believe in thy heart you are fully, you are fully convinced. You are fully convinced that from east to west there is no other Savior, there is no other God, no other King, no other Redeemer. From north to south, from east to west, there is none but Him. And you let go of every other thing that call themselves gods and goddesses of this and that. Jesus, only Jesus. 
according to the flesh, the Son of the living God. Wow. And even in heaven, Jesus, up to today, called God the Father, his Father. And believe in your heart. Spirit, your spirit man. You see that opportunity to make that something that you are convinced about. And believe in thine heart that God, please, can you read that portion again? Which God has, which God raised Jesus, God the Father, and God the Holy Ghost. And shall believe in your spirit. It is with the spirit. Our spirit is our library. The library of our convictions is our spirit. Anne, write that down. The library of our convictions the library of our success is our spirit man. The bank for our money is our spirit man. Write all these things down, honey. So, believe, real knowing, real seeing comes from the spirit realm. Your ability to live well on the earth and do well on the earth comes from the spirit man. Ability to know your way so that you are not deceived comes from the spirit man. So with your spirit and in a situation that you don't, you've not reached this place of knowing how to do these things which one is which, just use your mind, that's what I tell people, and you will grow into the spirit. Feed on the breast first, not on the breast later, you will eat real, real food, vegetable food, meat, fish, all that, fruits. With your spirit, because many of you say, how do I use my spirit? I don't know how to use my spirit. Just key it in. Lord, I'm using my spirit. That's how I used to do it when I didn't know where my spirit was. Lord, I don't know where my spirit is, but I know it's inside me, inside my body. I believe. I believe with my spirit. Dreams comes from two places, from the spirit and also from the mind. Dreams also comes sometimes from the body, from your emotion, from what you've seen, from your, from your calculated systematic experiences in life. Please write that down, Anne. Put it exactly as I put it, from calculated systematic experiences of life. Dreams can come from all of that. There are things either you make up or things that make itself up for you. Mm. Devil can make up dreams for you. God can also put together a dream for you. They all, they all are sent into our spirit being. And then they flow into our mind so that we can remember. You believe that God has risen from the dead. That is the core of Christianity. The center of Christianity is the resurrection. I saw him risen from the dead. That's the center. When Mary Magdalene said, I have seen the Lord, that is the center of Christianity. The center of Christianity. See, see what it is. The center of Christianity, let me, let me put it very well for you. The center of Christianity is the cross, the Golgotha. 
a sacrifice of the Son of God. But the power of Christianity is the resurrection. Is the resurrection. The center of Christianity, and I write that down, the center of Christianity is the sacrifice of Jesus at Golgotha. The power of Christianity, what gives it evidence, is the resurrection. And the fire of Christianity is the Holy Ghost, Pentecost. Please make sure you put it, the Holy Ghost, you put in bracket, Pentecost. Hallelujah. Sente dente sente balun de lele kichi de bakela. E fele canto le santi. Mole condo bolo si la bacule. E fanda la badu lele sinti. Me cole batun de la sinda la culia. Fecale tanta la vale sati telekele shorly. Molanto belo a cale basanti aleke yuyi. E malu lele basanti alola de kinda. Malu kole bishi kalabuli la bunti le sele kakili. E molo lo boshante le bokuli alami yase. The gospel of my son will always be preached in power. It will always be preached in fire. I am going to make sure that the power in the center of the gospel come afresh in every generation. And in this generation, I will once again pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Revivals are going to break out from nations and cities where we didn't think and places that have been prepared for revival the fire will come from somewhere to catch them where they are for where people have become so much intellectuals for where people are used to the same things i will leave them as old wine in old I will leave them as old wine in old wine scum. I am looking for those who know me. They are convinced about me. I'm looking for those who want to move with me where I am today. For I am far away from where we think I am. I'm many thousands of years ahead of every one of you. And you have to ask me where I am in the schemes of things so that I can reveal it to you. So while you guys are fighting over smoke and ashes, my fire is far away where it is. Ask the Holy Ghost. He is the fire. And he will take you to where the fire is. Because where the fire is, that is where the money is. Where the fire is, that is where the people will be. Where the fire is, that is where the riches and, and wealth will be. Where the fire is, that is where I and my son and the angels are gathered. And the church is far behind where I am. And I'm pleading with you tonight to ask of my spirit. And the Holy Ghost will take you to where the fire is so that you will be able to be warm again in the inside so that you do not need to struggle a whole lot to be what you want to be your destiny is at stake your fire is almost burning away burning down to ashes your wealth is almost been taken away from you ask the holy spirit to take you 
not back to where you began, but take you to where the fire is, where I am waiting for you to come, where I have baked the bread and where I put the fish together for you. Your money is waiting for you. Your car is waiting for you. I have mansions, not in heaven only, but on the earth waiting for you. Your ministry is waiting for you. Your life is waiting for you. Your marriage is waiting for you. Everything you wanted is waiting for you. It is where the fire is. And it is where the fire is that I will make known to you things that have been hidden from you for a long time. Your nation is suffering because you are far away from the fire. That's why anyone can just come up and go into where they shouldn't go and lead everyone astray. And everyone listen to bow as though they are hearing from my son. Thus says the spirit of the living God. These things will stop. If you ask the Holy Ghost to take you to where the fire is, it's just that simple. And then you will see vision activated, dreams activated. Your finances will return. Not just that they will return. Stop asking me for the past days that you want your life to be like they used to be. You want to have what you used to have. You want to have the houses that you lost, the cars, the job that you lost. Those were not yours. If they were yours, you would have been there. Ask me to give you things that carries great value. Ask me for a life that history cannot repeat. Ask me for a life that history cannot repeat. And I'll give it to you. Ask me for great things that no human being can take away from you. This is the word of the Lord straight from heaven for the church, for the people of God, and for your partners, says the Spirit of the Lord. Now let's continue. Where did we stop? At mm -hmm. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, people of God, I hope you've just experienced when the real word of God is being released, then God come in to, to reveal, to lead, to take care. That's just what we, we were just experiencing a few minutes ago. These are not things that are scripted. These are not things that are read in a book. These are things that just come. This is how this used to be in, in, in the classical times, in the, in the church. Go and look at the book of Acts. You will see it, which is also the act of the Holy Ghost. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and then you intellectualize it, you supernalize uh, it by believing it. Believing has to do with two parts. The mind is involved, the spirit is involved. These are things that you are not going to let go because this is your life. Apart outside this, you have no life. Remove the, the five books of Moses. The Jews have no race, no religion, nothing. For us, remove the center. Remove the power. Just remove the center. Good Friday, the sacrifice of Jesus. For us, that's the center. Then, remove the power, his resurrection. Remember what Paul says. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. The resurrection is where the power is. And then the fire, the Holy Ghost. These are the three things you need. If you are convinced and conviction come with your heart, with your spirit, being, with your mind, you believe. Belief comes from inside. Conviction is belief. Belief is conviction. You are convinced about what you believe. That's why you believe. You believe in your heart that the Father has risen from the dead. That's how you become a Christian. You don't go to say that you believe that Jesus is Lord and that your name is written in the book of life and then you believe in Krishna, you believe in Shiva, you believe in Buddha, you believe in Muhammad, you believe in whatever comes. You believe it. 
any philosophy. No, you don't do that anymore. It's focused on one, one man, one God. The man who is God, the God who is man. One spirit, the Holy Ghost. One Father, God the Father. Hallelujah. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead for you. You will be saved. And when we say saved, it means salvation. Saved financially. Saved all of that. Because you will go back and see where he says, and whoever believed in him will never be put to shame. Finish the reading. Okay, stop there. Stop there. For with the heart, that spirit again. If you if you believe that he has been raised from the dead, you can confess that he is Lord. Think about it. Then declare it. See, you use your spirit to plan things. And then you execute. The Father has risen from the dead. It's with your mouth you proclaim what is in your heart. Don't let anybody fool you. If you want to really know what people think, what they think, whether about you, about anybody, just listen to what they say. They can tell you that they were not serious because the slip of their mouth, with the abundance of the heart, people speak. That's the only, that's, I mean, you can know through their action, but you will also know even quicker with your words. It doesn't take me time to know those who, if they stay around me, they will mock me. You ask them to do something, you hear them saying some mumbling things. I'm serious. If there is somebody around and you ask them to do something, and you will see them trying to mumble something to that person to make you look small and they themselves look big. I see all the time I be here, like I don't see it. You cannot allow those kind of people to, to hang around you. They can hang around you for a season, but along the way, they'll fizzle and go. So those are the kind of people who will not protect you when the time comes for it. You believe in your heart. He has been raised from the dead. Then, that's the key to all success. That's the key to being a champion. Those two things. Well, is that one thing you believe? Then you can speak what you believe. What you know must be spoken for the let the world hear what you believe. That is how you win. Let the world hear what you are going to get. That's how you get it. Let them hear what you've seen. That's how you invite it. Please, Annie, please write all these things down. Then go on and read the last part, the last verse you read. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For with the, okay, read, read, read the whole thing again. Okay, with their heart, let's go. With their heart, a human being believe unto justice, unto righteousness. You are put right with God. Not just that you are put right with God, you begin to do things rightly because of what you believe. God see at the heart. In, in God responding to us or dealing with us, you look at our heart, our spirit. See how important our belief is about Jesus, our devotion to him is. 
At the end of the day, it will all come back to devotion. How high, how powerful, how convinced are we about him will show itself in our devotion. For with the heart, we believe to righteousness. We are made right not by only what we say. We are made right first and foremost. The foundation, the foundation for our being made right with God through Christ is what we are convinced about him, what we believe. That's how it is. It comes from the inside. Righteousness is an inside thing before it flows outside. Justice. We are put right. God sees us as being right with himself. Accept us in. Is because we say, Jesus is Lord. Why? Because we are convinced. Because we believe it. With all of our heart. We are ready to die for it. We are ready. We, we, not just that we hope for it. We, we are convinced about it. We die for it. We live for it. We are ready to defend it. Because it comes from the heart. comes from the spirit. It has taken root also in our mind. So, you finish with him. Uh, read that portion again. For with the heart, a human being believe on to a human being believe and is made right. And then that is why after you confess that Jesus is Lord because you believe, you invite him into you, that's how you begin to do things. You begin to see things differently. Begin to do things differently. I mean, not everything. There are some things that you will grow and grow out of. But the other things, some things will be instant. Continue, my dear. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made, with the mouth proclamation is made unto execution, unto harvest. And then finish the reading. Verse 11. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There is nobody who believe in him with the heart and confesses him with the mouth will be put to shame. Your history is changed. Your life is changed. Because of what you just did. Now let me also share with you what the Holy Ghost shared with me when I was sharing with uh, with Rosie today. Um, see what, see what. I don't know what I should read to you the the key word. No, let me not. Let me just go here. Look at this. It says, um, <clears throat> let's look at it this way. With your heart, you believe. That is with your spirit. You believe. All these things is involved in this. But let me also share something with you. With your heart, that spirit, you believe. When we say believe, we are looking at it from a very... What I'm doing tonight is a classic broadcast. So I will let it be there for like one day and then it will be... It will no longer be there on YouTube because this is classic. I, I'm doing this broadcast tonight because I'm asked to do it. Um, with your heart, with your spirit, you believe. And this is what the Holy Ghost told me. Believe also means you create. With your heart, you create. Or you produce. Creation and production 
come from the spirit realm or from the mind realm. If you can combine the two of them, that's great. But what, that is where planning happens. Another word for believe is to create or produce or to plan and execute. You see, this is where spirit and giftedness, anointing glory comes in in my ministry, this kind of thing. How will I ever know this? My mind cannot take me there. With your spirit, you believe. And what is believe? All we've been talking about believing in Jesus, da 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 da, da. But now Jesus now to, has to shift me. Because, you see, one of the reasons I was sent to this earth is to help the children of God get out of sadness and mourning and weeping so that they can go into number one joy, number two happiness. Joy, heaven, happiness, earth. Joy is what God gave us. Joy is God's own kind of happiness being made available to us human beings. I hope, honey, you've written that thing down. Well, happiness is what we create for ourselves that will make us happy on the earth. Hallelujah. G has told me that I should not be gesturing with my hand. So G, I'm going to learn how not to do that anymore. I'm going to learn how to be still like a real TV person. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. With your spirit, you believe. That is, you create. And then you you produce. That is the manufacturing, the industry, the institution is in the belief. It is in the spirit. In your spirit, you can also put your mind there because it's connected. That's where you believe. That's where you create. That's where you plan. And then you produce, which means you execute. And not only that, and with your mouth, and with your mouth, you declare, you confess. Hmm. With your mouth, you declare. Hmm. The meaning of with your mouth confession is made unto salvation means that with your mouth you call what you have planted. You see, with your spirit also another word for create, produce, um, plan, execute means also planting. What you've been thinking, also it has to do with thinking with your spirit, with your mind, you think what you've been thinking, what you have been planning, imagining, praying about, fasting about, sowing special seed, connect with my altars. What happened? With your mouth, since you are now convinced about all these things, you spend time to to, to, to plant, to, to, to execute, to create, all of that. It is with your mouth that you begin to give birth. You receive. What you say about what you are thinking, you receive. What do you say about what you are planning, you receive. What do you say about what you're producing? Because your thinking, your prayers, your fasting, your reading the word, your planting seeds of money, you're going to your job. What happened? You say it with your mouth. You receive. 
you receive, you receive, you receive, you receive. I was saying to Rosie tonight that um, I will begin to talk about the kind of car that she wants and the kind of house she wants because you see, Brother Hagen talks about when he prays about a thing one time, then he will at least tell one person about it. I am expecting a hundred thousand dollars. You never go back to pray about it. You only start talking about it. I have practiced it and it works for me. I'm going to drive to some so kind of car. Within two weeks, I'm driving that car. Why? plan, plant, start producing, execute, and then say it with your mouth. See, when you go into prayer, when you go into prayer, make sure that you document what is important to you. Do not just pray and walk away, document, 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 document. For prayer is a legal thing, so document. And when you prayed about it, don't pray about it anymore. Start talking about what you have received. This is the only way that you will deceive, uh, you will not just deceive the devil, but you will also destroy them. Destroy the imagination and collective mindset against you. They don't know these things. This is the only way that you will overcome them. They will try to remind you, why is God not talking to you? Why has God not come through? Why has God not done this? And you start and you ignore those thoughts. And what do you do? What do you do? You continue to say, I am a debt free woman. I am a debt free man. I am healthy. I have I have so some so kind of I have so some so kind of house with so some so kind of things in that. I have so some so kind of marriage. This is how many houses that I have. Because until you begin to say it, you don't get it. What you are planning, what you are imagining, what you are praying about, you must begin to say it. And it's not something that you say one day, next day. No. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. I'll keep this here. I think I'm done for tonight. I want you to begin to, to, to speak. I want you to begin to speak. I want you to begin to speak about what God has given to you. I want you to speak about what God has given to you. Why? Because you prayed about it. So why are you repeating it again? When you have declared it with your mouth, I am expecting a million dollars. And Father, if there is anything that I have to do on my own part, please let me know. Anywhere that you want me to move to, let me know. Lord, deny the enemies, the intelligent, to deceive me. Instead, let me be the one who deceives them. When you hear me use the word deceive, God do deceive his enemies. When his enemies wanted to kill Jesus, God deceived them. They couldn't get a hold of him. <laughs> when his enemies thought that it was over at the cross, and suddenly, that evening they saw Jesus marching down to the gate of hell and said, come on, I'm now here. I'm in charge of the living and I'm in charge of the dead. They were all shocked. You are God's supernatural secret. 
Please write that down. You are God's supernatural secrets on the earth. And just as everybody thought that you were finished with, that's when you will march down as a general. And you now own everything. I believe with my heart and I confess that those partners who are with me now and those who have started to come and to stay are going to be the next generation of millionaires and billionaires on the earth, the next generation of world leaders. I am going to be running a worldwide institution of leaders and I will need a lot of you to help me. Please remember that my birthday is coming on June 18. You will see a poster. Ladri, thank you very much for that wonderful poster. Please. This year, I am expecting over 100,000 US dollars to execute a lot of plans on the earth. Don't laugh, I mean business. I need a new car and I need new things. There's more money than that that I've asked God for a mansion. Many of you do not understand this kind of thing. That's why I'm breaking it down tonight so that you can know it. If you are, conv if you are convinced about something which is belief, then say it. Let people laugh at you. They laugh at Jesus. Today he is the prince over the kings of the earth. Today he is king of kings and lord of lords, as though he was and he has always been. He now, he now wears a crown. The baby in the manger now wears a crown on his head. He's God. Hidden inside him was God. <laughs> your family members are making fun of your mother's children, you included. How will this, will this fly ever become anything? I want you to tell the atmosphere. The stones that the builders have rejected has become the head of the corner. And I am that stone. You have to say this. I'm going to drive a better car than what I have now. I'm going to live in a better house than where I live now. My children will be having A's and B's. They are better behaved. They are the next world leaders and rulers. Thank you, Jesus. No mental sickness will dwell in my family. No cancer. See, whatever you want in life, whatever you wish for, You can spend your time to brood over it, to think over it, and to say to yourself, I'm no longer fond of living like this. Change has been granted unto me. And that change, I am, and I must pursue. I don't care what life has offered to me today. I have something better today and tomorrow. I will never die until I fulfilled my destiny. Look at you. God has used you to bless a lot of people, to raise your family. Now, why do you think that you are not going to get a reward for that? The universe owes you money, not just God. Universe, I call on you to release that money to my partners. Human beings owe you money. And God does, because you've done a lot of things in His name. Put this, put this, put this word into action. It will always work for you. This is a verification principle in philosophy. Wherever you are, you are willing to put it into action, it's going to work for you.
I want to thank Rosalind for coming to check on me today and it ended up that she has to do the readings and to be the first person to listen to this broadcast. Thank you very much. And uh, Vivian, if you get this, thank you for loaning your sister to me so that she's able to do this tonight with me. This, is, this has been a very, very, very famous broadcast. I love it. Please, whatever you want, when you pray about it once, begin to talk about that you've got it. Not to everybody, somebody like myself, you can talk, you can talk to me about it. And I'll begin to rejoice with you. I look forward this year from today till the end of December, I'm looking forward to thousands of miracles that will happen to my partners around the world. Great things, great things will happen for our good. I also look forward to change of governments in nations of the world. There will be changes of governments. Power must change hand. I proclaim that. I am Bishop Idikai Mary, and I want to wish you a very wonderful evening. Please, if you want to make contact with me, if you want to write to me, it is PO Box 2491, Wichita, Kansas State, 67201 USA. You can also email us at the at the Go to our website www.idikaimeriministry.com and you will see a lot of things about our ministry that you can be part of. On behalf of all of our broadcasting team, I want to wish you a wonderful Horama vision because I see it. I have it. Because I see it, I am it. That's who we are. God's oracle and vision. Remember to send, um, and for those of you who want to send whatever you want to send for the bishop's birthday, please do it ahead of time. Do it ahead of time, please. Because during that time, I will not be available. So anything you want to send, please send them ahead of time. Send them before June 18 because I I will be doing some I will be training some people somewhere. It will be a busy time for me to also do some things out there. So anything whether you are sending a card, you're sending money, you're sending a gift, please begin today to send them. Because I also I'll be doing a seven day ministration over the gift that you sent to me. Except God bless you, I will never be happy. So until I see God bless you, then I will be happy. I'm not saying I'm not happy, but that's what I want to happen to you. Until I see you rich, I will not be satisfied. Until I see you healthy, I will not rest. Until I see God give you a new body part, I'm not going to stop being in his presence for you. Until I see your death canceled, how do you think that I'm going to be happy on it when you have that? No way. Good night and God bless you.